Hello, it's the Away Day Experience Show with myself, Sam Davis. And me, Tom Jordan. If you've not seen this series before, it's simple. We travel to every single game that's going and we review it. And we review it based on a number of factors that Tom's going to tell you in a moment. But we then collate it and then we put the team into a tier list, Tom. And it's been, it's been a really good series so far, hasn't it? It has. We love a tier list as everyone does but um yeah it's been really interesting actually it's it's nicely spaced out at the moment and at the tier list and um yeah we've had some really good ones i think the majority have been good it's been uh, the chat is the championship and it's some great away days mate some have disappointed but yeah as i'm sure we'll go on to we leave the bars at the door it's nothing to do with the performance because we've had a few bad ones it's all to do with everything besides what we what we see on the pitch um and we'll come on to the little factors that we that, we, that, that come into play when we decide where you go on the list. Right, so this is the current tier list. This is how it's looking. You can see that there are a couple of clubs in Yes Lads, namely Blackpool and Bristol City, all the Bs. One club has made the bottom category. Absolute dog, that was Preston North End. In between, we've, we've, we've experienced some, some fairly good away days and some not so good ones, but the ultimate aim of your side is surely to get in that top tier. So, could it be today's side? Who are we doing, Tom? Oh, West Brom! West Bromwich Albion. West Bromwich Albion. And look, this one was always going to be, firstly, an interesting match because they're a side that started off the season so well, but their performance had tailed off a little Mm. bit, which I thought their fans might not really be up for it. Maybe the team won't as well, but I've heard good things about this place, namely the pre-match pub as well but Tom Mm. we talk about six different points and we score them out of ten what do we talk about we do we always start off with the pre-match experience how is it getting there obviously Mm. travel depends on how far we're going we're right down south so um, we've always got to go north haven't we so Mm. um, but yeah we uh, talk about that pre-match experience what it's like getting there what's the pub like beforehand all the stuff before a ball's kicked then we get into the stadium. Yeah. We've got some nice stadiums in the championship. We talk about the stadium in general, what it's, what it's like, what it looks like from the outside, what it looks like from the inside. Yeah. And we get into that a little bit more detail. And then we move on to inside the stadium with the concourse and the facilities yeah. there. You know, and what it's like in there. Some have been crowded this season. Some yeah. have been really spaced out. And obviously, we always count out the fact that it depends how many supporters you take there. And then in the concourse, you can get some food and drink if you want. Mm. So we talk about the food and drink. What the prices are like, what the you know what the variety is. Some places are better than others. Then we go into the view in the stadium. Oh, yeah. What's the view like? There's certain ones you get a few pillars there. Other ones, perfect view. So we got to put that into consideration. And finally, we go for the home fan decibel level. How loud are the home supporters? That's probably the only category this season that I've been a little bit disappointed. Mm. That with the consistency, there hasn't been too many good ones. I always counter out this by saying that we're not the best at home either. So I appreciate that. But yeah, we go into that as well. Once again, we're at the Pear at Parley. If you want to come for some really good food or just a drink in the sun, their beer garden is absolutely mm. huge. They've got a couple of woodland dining huts and also, yeah, the food. My goodness me. It is chef's kiss exquisite. Link is in the description. And Tom, we leave our bias at the door. Look, West Brom beat us 2-0, but that's not going to have any bearing on what we score. No, no, absolutely not. If it was, um, if it was on that, it'd be right in the bin. There'd be no point watching the video, mate. It's, um, yeah, we, we, we leave that at the door, as you say. I think there's a, there's a few in there that, that can kind of justify us on that. I think Stoke's right near the bottom of our yeah. away down. That was a really good one, they'll win. Yeah. So that's always one that you can look at and go, okay, they are leaving the bias at the door. Mm. But um, yeah, because performance from us wasn't very good, from West Brom it was. So uh, yeah, disappointing on the pitch, but off the pitch, let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the six points that Tom mentioned. We'll score them out of 10, but don't go adding them up at the end because that doesn't really have any bearing on what tier we're going to put in. It's just how we feel. Okay, so firstly, we're going to talk about the pre-match experience. And look, the drive up to uh, West Brom was was pretty good. Just just over three hours. We got some off-road parking, which was free, Mm. near to the... To the Vine pub and, you know, that deserves a section all on its own, doesn't it, the Vine, mate? Yeah. What a great place to have a drink before Yeah, yeah, nice pub, the Vine, yeah. And it was it was quite, as you say, it was quite easy to park there. We literally yeah. headed for the Vine and found some street parking, I think, 
Obviously, this was a midweeker, a Wednesday night, which is always a bit frustrating. Uh, we've said this in a few previous videos that it might change if you're on a Saturday, and yeah. that's not, not your fault at all in terms of West Brom and the opposition, but we've got to go on our experience on that day mm -hmm. slash night. So that was frustrating, but that probably made it easier as yeah. well for the, for the pre-match to just park up on the road. So, yeah, that was Andy, mate, and uh, I like the vine. Mate, it's a target. Like so it's, it's a, it's a, I've never been there before, but it's a pub on the corner, and you look from the angle that we were looking at. It's like oh, it looks quite small in there, but you go, yeah. and it's like a TARDIS. It's absolutely huge, and the smell of tandoori chicken, mm. and it, you know, it's an Indian cuisine pub, and you go there, and there's like oh, curries being honestly. Really, really good food. Uh, yeah. Steve, Steve ate there and, you know, thought it was really good. Oh, Sam, yeah. oh, so you, you did. You had some tandoori chicken as well, oh, didn't I had, you? I had a bit of tikka, some naan bread of that. And the, the best thing was we were having all these sauces. I don't know what they are. And Steve goes, I don't have a clue what this is. Brown sauce. <laughs> it's brown sauce. <laughs> I forgot about that. But, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. And, and I think it has. A lot of people, when you hear about it, it's voted kind of one of the best away pubs in, yeah, in the league. Yeah, not and, surprising. Yeah, not surprising. I've been there before and I went there again. It's, yeah, it, one of my favourites, mate, for an away day pub, definitely. Sam Booth had a curry there. He, he, he enjoyed that and yep. you, you walk into the pub and there's a couple of booths on the right hand side as you walk in and then you sort of go to the bar and there's this almost conservatory bit and then it goes yeah. into another room out the back and then you go through another set of doors and there's a big outdoor area part of which is sheltered so yeah. you know great place if you want to have a smoke or a vape or have an outdoor drink loads of space in there and it's it was only about a 15 minute walk to the yeah. stadium as well so it was, it was really nicely placed and really good full of home and away fans yeah. as well and well behaved, yeah. you know, good bit of banter. And also, if there were Bournemouth fans trying to start a charm, they quickly jumped on it. And on it. I think that's probably a good thing. Sometimes you do want a sing song. Yeah. But when that happens, then tensions naturally arise. Where, where yeah. Whenever they heard that, the, the kind of door staff were straight over and be like, look, can you just kind of rein it in a little bit? But yeah. that, And that created for a, a really nice atmosphere. Yeah, it depends what sort of, you know, away pub you're at. And I think this one is... You know, centered a lot around the food and how good the food is, mm. and people are sat down eating. You don't need chart, and they want one of them, them pubs. But yeah, I really like it. As you say, it was is a nice walk to the ground. Yeah. The away fans were great, and even with the weather, because I met it was raining for a bit. It was cold. It was yeah. And but because of how big it is, and even when you got outside, you got the shelter. Yeah. It's ideal. So um, yeah, really, really happy with the pre-match, mate. And um, it is one of my favourite pubs. I, don't, I won't forget the vibe. I think that's always important when you go to an away game again. Yeah. Say we want to go up. Hopefully yeah. we will and we'll think about what pubs we went to, I'll remember that West yeah. Brom was the vine, and I think that says a lot. Excellent stuff. So then, out of 10, Tom, what are you gonna, what are you gonna rate it? Starting strong, as they did on the game. Eight. Eight. Eight, eight out of 10. Eight out of 10 for the pre-match experience. Superb stuff. Right, Hawthorns, I quite, mm. I quite like the stadium. It's yeah. kind of, um, it's, it's got a similar vibe to the to the show that we'll be doing recording here tomorrow. Okay, sure. Uh, with Sheffield United, um, in that it's I you know I would say the capacity is probably fairly similar. So, Grand old ground. They played there a number of years, but um, you know really liked it. And where we were, we had a we had a really good view. But the stadium itself, mate. Yeah, stadium itself is 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 really nice. As you say, it's um yeah I've been there a couple of times. It's a nice stadium. The away end's nice. You're behind a goal. It's it's all good and. Yeah, I, I do. I do quite like the Hawthorns. I can see, you know, obviously it's been in the Premier League as well as the lower leagues, and it's a it's a nice stadium. I don't think you could have too many qualms about about no. the stadium. It is a good one, mate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I I did really like it, and one one thing that slightly confused me was what, the way we walked in. You could you could walk in a certain way, but then when you left the stadium, you had to walk. Oh, yeah. um, down a dedicated like away path so they closed off the gates i think yeah. they were opened like 20 minutes after uh the match finished so it i sort of lost my bearing a bit a, a little bit like millwall you have your own mm. dedicated path maybe that comes in quite handy when they're playing like Wolves, villa etc but yeah then you get put out onto another road and then you've got to circle back to where you were but when you've you just know, been destroyed by andy carroll you want to get out quick as well yeah exactly and it you know took that little bit longer but you know re like really like the stadium yeah uh I was happy. Out of ten? Seven. Seven. Seven out of ten. Beautiful. Beautiful. So next we're going to do um, concourse and facilities. First thing I've got to say, as soon as you walked in there, laminate flooring, ladies and gentlemen. Like a Dean Court, it's like this concrete kind of, uh, or, or what, you know, composite thing, but it's laminate flooring at West Brom. And like Steve said, it's, it's almost like the club's been 
been like yo-yoing between money and not having money. It, it was a lovely finish. Uh, <laughs> not so great for slipping up if you spill a drink on there, but it was fine. Yeah. Um, that that was nice. But the concourse was a uh, a relatively good size. The the beer though, I, I think I, I I remember you having a like, bottle of Carling or something, mate, for four pound eight. Like, well, I'll come on to that in the food and drink section because I think that that's got to go into that yeah. category. But yeah, not yeah. <laughs> Wait for that one, but and, yeah. But what that did, the food price made sure the concourse was actually quite uh, spacious because <laughs> yeah. no one wanted to go there. Yeah, but, I, I know what you mean. But you could go outside. Yeah, uh, could you go outside? Yeah, you could because we were all stood outside in the dark, and Jeff Abel was out there, and right. yeah, yeah, Oof. yeah. You could go out, and um, it was quite spacious. So I think, yeah, as you say, food and drinks got to be quite separate. This so they yeah. normally kind of go in. Do you know what I mean? Then these two categories kind of, you know, kind of merge. Yeah, yeah. But in this this sense i don't think they do i think the concord facilities is actually all right yeah yeah and it's quite spacious quite quite good um i mean we took a few fans yeah we did take a few yeah. and, 1, um, something. yeah yeah it was um yeah and it never felt crowded and stuff like that so yeah you could go outside you could stand inside so that that was all handy so yeah to be honest concourse of facilities itself was okay mm. okay uh I, I remember going to the toilet no queues uh you're fairly clean fairly well kept mm. um i'm quite happy with this but before oh. we go any further, it's always good to get the views of Rob Trent from Access Advisor, who provides a view on what it's like accessibility-wise. He's in a power chair, and um, what was really good for him, they parked right next to the stadium at the Hawthorns, and he said that it was step-free access all the way, which was fantastic to see. There was an accessible entrance for him as well as a, as a plain flies over us. I'm just going to wait for this to die. Down, mate. Why do we always get the planes? Always, mate. We're always here when they go to Alicante. We need to start yeah. judging it now. Right. Someone's on a lads weekend. Someone's on a lads weekend. So we'll go on to refer to the fact that there was an area that was for use by disabled fans and friends that Rob said was, was really clean and tidy, which was um, fantastic to see. They even had a sensory room which was so good to see with all sorts of bits in as well. They had an accessible bar area as well. There was one place that Rob went to. I can't remember, it was a ticket office of some kind where they only had really high platforms. So he yeah. was like talking to a wall with his pack, which was like, yeah, not good as well. There were four accessible toilets, two left hand and two right hand transfers, which really good to see. They've obviously put a lot of thought into that and also clean and tidy as well. He said there should be a big shout out to every steward because they were welcoming and they were friendly and making sure that all was okay. And the away fan section was along the front in the far corner. He said there was a, a smooth service, but look, looks looks really spacious and a slightly raised viewing area as well. Small gradient on the ramp, on the ramp, and that provided a good pitch side view as well. And the view was not spoiled by photographers or stewards as well. We'll go on to the food and drink, but look, we can't not mention the fact that he thought the Balti pie that he had was a was a three out of five. We'll keep that in mind. But Rob's review of that was really, really good in terms of ease of access, stop helpfulness, etc. Make sure you contact uh, and check out Access Advisor. If you've got any questions or queries on, on what you've just watched, because Rob, I'm sure, will be um, quick to advise uh, on anyone with accessibility needs for any club in the championship. So, with that in mind, mate, yeah. concourse and facilities. Yeah, it's always good to get um, Rob's view on it as well. And um, he's had a few disappointed ones, so it's nice to see that. The, I always like the fact that when the when the staff are friendly as well, yeah. that's always yeah, it makes makes that match that experience better. And from from his point of view, the facilities seem good as well as they were for us. So I'm going to go for another seven. Seven. Yeah, love it, love it. By the way. When you write a seven on paper, do you do the little kind of thing across the seven? I never used to, now I do. Do you? Yeah, I don't know why. why I've changed. I don't know. I never used to do the line. Now, yeah. I, now I always do the line. I sometimes do. Anyway, mm. details. Important. Details. You know, you know, we tackle all the big topics yeah. here on back on it. Um, food and drink then. I've briefly alluded to the fact that um, the, the, the cheap bottles of piss that they were selling made sure that the concourse was um, nice and clear. But they were £4.80 bottles of no, no, no. carling. £5. £5? £5. £5. Oh, God, man. Steve, bless him. 
Well, I'll get these <laughs> half time, right? Three bottles of Carla, 15 quid. That is outrageous. For a pint of Carla, that's outrageous. For a plastic bottle of Carlin, that is a joke. <laughs> and that's got to be up there, one of the worst of the season. That is outrageous. Carlin, worst lager. Can just accept it if it's cheap. Yeah. But, I mean, in a plastic bottle for a fiver is an absolute joke. That's not good That's at all. awful. I don't know how they can justify that. Having said that, they'll say, we justify it because you bought it. <laughs> we still <laughs> bought it. But, yeah, outrageous. I didn't eat. Did you eat? I ate a chicken burger that I thought was crazy. Oh, you said to me it was awful. It was, it was rank. I mean... Maybe it would have been better with sauce, but the bread was really dry. Should have ate in the vine, a... mate. Should have ate in the vine. Yeah, vi. I should have. And the, yeah, chick- it wasn't great. Rob had his bolty pie, which is three out of five. Mm. I'm, I'm not happy with this. No, and I'm not. I'm not having it, mate. Three out of ten. <laughs> There's nothing good about it. I'm, I'm not having it. Three out of ten. Three out of ten. Right then. Um, in terms of the view, mm. we were we were really high up, so you know we could see that. Yeah. That fifteen minute period of dominance in the first uh, for, first part of the game really really well and uh, I, I thought it was a really good view and you could go all the way down the front you could go yeah. all the back so yeah I thought it was quite good yeah I thought uh, uh, for a large part I thought I had a pillar in front of me and then I realised it was Andy Carroll causing havoc <laughs> um, yeah so I almost during the game I almost wished I had a pillar to be honest mate um, it's gone down yeah. Well. Um, yeah, it was. <laughs> I like it. I always like it. We said this before. There's a few that are on the side, but I like it when you're behind a goal. Yeah. Um, we had a decent view. I think there are a few pillars, but nothing too extreme that um, caused any sort of um, disruption. So yeah, happy with the view, mate. Um, you know, be interested to see if anyone had any problems. But I, I didn't hear of any. I was really happy with it. It was one of the games that I thought I wish I didn't have a good view, to be honest. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, it was it was fine, mate. It was absolutely fine. And take into account the Rob had a good, uh, relatively yeah, good exactly. view as well. What are you going for? It's got to be another solid seven, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree with that. Okay, um, then home fan loudness, and this was one that um, mm. uh, you know what from the start of the game there wasn't much in terms of decibel level, and I can see why that was. The fans were very much despondent. A lot of them were expecting that their team was going to get turned over. But I've got to say, even at 2-0 up, I great. thought they were still quite quiet. They weren't great. And I always try and... Because we've, we've seen, if you want to go back and watch any other videos to compare if you're a West Brom fan, no one's really... There's only been a very few that have scored high yeah. because it has been disappointing this season. Yeah. Um, and I know that ourselves, we want to improve the home atmosphere and I know it's difficult. And so I try and put into context the fact that they've got a manager that maybe they don't really want. It's not really a long-term thinking with Steve Bruce. Yeah, they they true. expect this game should have been a top-of-the-table clash, really, and it's not outside chance of the playoffs, but it would be unlikely. But, yeah, I, so I kind of expected that at the start of the game. But as you say, when they go 2-0 up and they're, you know, they're dominating us... I expect it would be raucous. But I expect, and, it, and it wasn't... There was a few chances for Carroll and stuff, and it was yeah. OK, but... It wasn't the worst I've seen this season, but it should have been better for the fact they were they were leading 2-0 at a team that should get promoted. Yeah. So, you know, it, was, it was a good result for them. So, yeah, a little bit kind of disappointed, I suppose, with with just how quiet it was. So, you know, I like, yeah. it. But I've been there before in the past and it's been all right as well. Mm. So maybe it's just what's going on for them at the moment. Um, because I've been there a few times. I certainly wouldn't say they're ones that I always think are quiet. Yeah. They can be all right. So nothing on them. Let us know in the comments why you think that may be if you're a West Brom fan. But a little bit disappointing from their point of view, but understandable a little bit as well, I think. Mm. Because, I mean, they're mid-table nearly. Yeah. They're, they should be in the top few, mate. So, kind of get it. Just uh, before we come to the um, the the scores on this, I, I just want to say one more thing about the home fans. Uh, they're so friendly. In the Vine, yeah, I was great, chatting yeah. to a number of them and... Uh, Molly let me speak to her on the vlog and her dad and her, and her mate and a couple outside. And Molly was probably like, is this weirdo with the camera in a Bournemouth shirt? But you know what? She came on the vlog and um, outside there was a, you know, a couple of fans as well. Like really, really. Fr- but then but then you get that with people from like the West Midlands. Like they're, they're all really like, you know, down to earth people. So, yeah. but, but we are going to score you quite low. All right. So, do you, <laughs> so just want to say, what's yeah. it going to be? I'm gonna go. I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to put it in cons. I'm gonna go for four because it was below average, and I think that's fair. Four. That's there fair. you go. That is what Tom's going for. Right then, let's bring up that beautiful tier list. There it is. And look, we've got a number of categories that um, are more filled out than others. Mm. I'm, I'm really intrigued where you're gonna put this one, mate, because you know it, you've got the you, you, you've got some scores there that are 
not very good at all in terms of food and drink, but then you've got others that are more yeah. favourable. Uh, where where does this rank for you in terms of the away day experience? Buddy? Yeah, there's only a couple in my mind, um, you know, kind of um, second and third kind of categories. Okay. I think the pre-match and before the game is always important, and I think that was good. I think I can appreciate the, the as, as I said, I can appreciate the, the lack of vocalness from their fans of the season they've had. I enjoyed it, mate. It's going in decent. It's going in decent. That category's getting quite full now, but it deserves to go in there for me. Look at that. There we go. West Brom has been added to the decent category. Do you agree, Baggies fans? Let us know. Look, we try to be really honest, and mm. we're, we're not. We haven't mentioned the game that much, and we could be feeling really despondent and putting you in Name or absolute dog because of that, but we're not, and we really enjoyed it. And a lot of it, you know, is down to the vine as well, which you know, shows the importance of having a place that is 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 welcoming to away yeah. fans and makes the effort. Blackpool, which is top of the tree, yeah. you know, they're you know they're away pub before. The, not that that's all, what it's all about, but no, but it gets you warmed up. I think you've got a we we try and get probably let we try and get there about midday. Obviously, this uh, evening game so a bit different, but we try and get there at least a few hours before yeah, like one o'clock. Then yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. But it. You've got this is why we say don't add up all the scores and all that stuff because we're not going to put in the 15 minutes at half time, 20 for me. Mm. Um, we're not going to put that in as maybe as much as a, yeah, a three yeah. hours before the game, mm. so that does play a big part. Uh, the pre match and, and things like that, and I think that's why West Brom deserves that. And I think it proves there's no bias, mate, because we've got Luton in there, lost, Derby in there, lost, Peterborough away, we drew. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. But I think West Brom, and I almost feel for West Brom. I feel like if that was a Saturday and we were there for that little bit longer, that could have even, I mean, it would have pushed it. It would have yeah. pushed it. So it's a good away day. I do enjoy going to West Brom. It's one that whether we've had them in the Premier League or the Championship, I always think, fancy that one. Yeah. So Foridy deserves to be in decent, I think, to be honest with you. There we go. So that is where it is. That's the tier list. And we hope you enjoyed that show. Tomorrow, we're reviewing Sheffield United. Mm. So Blades fans, if you're... If you haven't been watching this, see how you compare to West Brom. Tom, it's been a pleasure. Always, mate. Always a pleasure. We've got, like, as you say, we've got to review the Sheffield one. We've got commentary not too far away. Yeah, so yeah. We've, got, we've got a few away games left to tick off. Let's see how that tier list pans out. Yeah, so will anyone get that top, mate? Do you reckon they will? So, yeah, we've got Sheffield. So, Coventry obviously played them on Monday. Yeah. You've got to do that. Remember and that, then yeah. we've got to keep sh- away games against. Who else have we got? Swansea, Blackburn. midweek, and Blackburn. And, last then, uh, and then that's our series complete. Unless playoffs. Every single game. This is why you need to subscribe. Uh, make sure you do so. Click that red button below. And, uh, and anytime we put some content, as long as you click that bell, it will alert you. Oh, it's been a pleasure, Tom. Pleasure, pleasure as always. Pleasure as always. Out the chest. See you Follow tomorrow. Follow the ball before. See you tomorrow. Bye.